Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a tool assisted speedrun. So first what we're going to do is we're going to download the emulator BizHawk. And this is an emulator that is specifically made for creating tool assisted speedruns. So we're going to go to the BizHawk website and you can see there is a downloads link to their GitHub page. So we're going to go to the downloads link, download the zip, use whatever the latest release is. So we're going to wait for this to download real quick. So once you have this file downloaded, we're going to open it up, create a folder on your desktop, which is called BizHawk or whatever you want to call it. And we are going to drag the contents of the zip into said folder. OK, now you can close the zip file. Now you can see we have all of the BizHawk files right here. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to download the ROM. So this is whatever game you're going to want to play. So if you just Google download ROMs. So let's say we want to create a task of Super Mario. Type in Super Mario. Uh, we'll go with Super Mario Advance 2. Click Save Game. And we will wait for this to download. So now that we have this downloaded, we can just drag this into the BizHawk folder. And the last thing that we need is the GBA BIOS. So if you look up GBA BIOS, there's a link to Emu Paradise, and we can download that as well. So this is a zip file. Open it and drag the contents into the firmware folder. This isn't released by BizHawk, so you have to download it on your own. So now what we can do, we can close out all those windows. So now that we have all the files downloaded, we are going to want to open EmuHawk. And we need to change some of the configuration settings. So we're going to go to View and click Display FPS, Enable Display Frame Counter, and Display Input. These will all be useful when we're creating our tool assisted speedrun. Now what you need to do is press pause on your keyboard, or you can go into emulation and click pause. So you'll see at the bottom that the emulator is paused. And then we are going to drag the ROM straight into BizHawk. So you can see that now it says Game Boy Advance, Super Mario Advance 2, 60 FPS, and 0. So 60 FPS is the speed, the frames per second of the emulator, and 0 is the total amount of frames that have passed. Now you're going to want to go to config and go to controllers. So this will determine what you will use to input keys into the game. So what I'm going to do is I don't need any of these. So I'm going to go through and press escape to clear all of them and then start over and put in the inputs that we're going to want. So up, I will use arrow keys down, left, right. For start, I'll use enter. For select, I'll use shift. So B, we will go with S, A, we'll go with A, L, we'll go with W, and R, we'll go with E. Now it's important to not save over the Q function because Q is how you will record in the emulator. And then we're going to go up to auto fire controls and clear both of these. We don't need this function for our purposes. And then on the bottom right, you're going to go ahead and click save. Now that we have saved our config, we can go ahead and go into view, go to window size and change this to four times just so we can see the emulator a little bit better. And then if you go to tools, task studio, you will get this window and this window will show us the inputs. So this is up, down, left, right, start, select, B, A, L, R. And as we, when we unpause the game, this will show all of the frames and you can scroll through and everything like that. So to begin our task, the first thing we need to do is save our task project file. So I'm going to name this CS490 and click save. So you can see that this is labeled CS490.taskproj and this one is also CS490.taskproj. So you can click on the EmuHawk window and press Q on your keyboard and you will see down here 
that when you toggle Q, this will go from a red light, which is in record mode, to play, which is used for playback. So we want to make sure that we are in record mode. And then you can go ahead and press pause on your keyboard. And you will see that the game is loading. And on the right, it will show you the, um, the inputs that are currently being put into the game. The red frame or the, the red lines represent frames that you are not able to put input in, such as during loading zones or during cutscenes. And the green zones are the zones that allow you to input something. So let's say that I wanted to input a jump somewhere. Then I could click on the corresponding frame. Using this function is quite tedious and it can take a long time. So what I prefer to do, because I'm I personally don't want to make it perfect, completely perfect, what I will do is combine save states with resetting and editing and stuff like that. So I'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and unpause the game. So you can see that the game is playing just like normal. And let's say I press enter on the keyboard. You saw the S go up on the right side. And now let's enter single player, Super Mario World. And let's select a new file. So you can see that the game has started. We are in the cutscene. So I can go ahead and press all my buttons on the keyboard and you'll see them show up on the right. And you can hold them down and they'll stay and things like that. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is save states. So over here, you can see I've unpaused the game. So let's say that I enter a world and I'm going along and let's say that I die or I know that something challenging is going to be coming up. So what we want to do is we want to create a save state and then that will allow us to continue from that save state, reload if we mess something up or something like that. So what you can do is go ahead and press I, which will allow you to save. So in the bottom left, you can see that it says saved branch zero. And then once you are done saving, then you can press P, which will allow you to load this save back up. So you can see I'm running around and on the right side, I am frame 3400. Now when I press P, I'm back to 3100. So let's say I'm going along, I want to jump, and let's say that I miss a jump. So go back and press P. So I am able to replay this section hundreds, thousands, however many times it takes to get it right. Another thing that you can do in Task Studio is called seeking. So on the right, you can see that we have all these right inputs. Now let's say that we go back and let's say maybe I for I pause too late or I miss something. So we are currently on frame 3334. But what we can do is let's say that the error occurred at 3215. So we can go back and you can see that Mario's position changed to where he was earlier. And let's say that we want to add an input here. Uh, so let's say we want him to jump. So now we are back here and we can go back and rewrite history essentially. Now, if you want to just edit one minor thing and not redo it from that part, then you're going to want to press Q again. So down in the bottom left, you can see that we are no longer in record mode. So when we press play, it won't redo it from that part. So let's see. So we're going to seek back here. And I believe A is the jump button. So we'll go back, go a little bit before that, make sure Q is off. So I'm not recording. Then we can press play and you see that Mario just jumped like that. So if we want to have frame perfect inputs where every other frame he will jump, then you can go ahead and skip frames like this. So we will go back and then play and you can see that, well in, in Mario, the longer you hold down A, the higher up he'll jump. So we can do something like an A down here, an A down here, an A down here. So go back up and press play. So you can see that there's all these jumps even though the original recording did not have those jumps inside of them. So now that I have gone through and 
made a playthrough of the first level, I will show you guys what it looks like. So you go ahead and you press the play button. So I, I went back to the beginning and I'm playing back everything. Notice that I have record turned off. And you'll see over here on the input side that there are very few inputs that are being shown. So it only takes one or two inputs to be able to do this. So it's going through, this area is a non skippable cutscene, which is why you don't see any inputs. And so once this is done loading, then I will show you guys. So that red area was the loading cutscene. I just went right, then I do A to select the level, and now comes all the inputs that are required to move right and while holding the shell. So I'm running along, jump, you see A while still holding right. And you keep doing this, jumping, all of this, all these inputs are very specific. So if you go back and you undo one of them, everything will be thrown off. So you can see that I jump over the shell before I even knew it was coming, obviously because I recorded this. Did a triple jump there, jump over everything and get through it perfectly without being harmed. So this is a great way to showcase uh, the max possible limits of the game. And as you can see, I just beat the level right there. Now, once you are done making your uh, task, you will go up to the top, go to File, Save. So this saves the task project file, so you can go back and edit it. But now if we want to export this to, let's say, a video format, then we can go down here and go to export to BK2. Okay, so now that we have this saved as a BK2, we can close out of Task Studio, go to File, go to Movie, and go to Play Movie. So you can see there's the CS490.BK2 file, which is the one that we just had. So go back. And now if I press the pause button, sorry, then I am able to go through and watch this all over, all without having Task Studio there. You can't edit the inputs and you can send this file to someone without it being altered and they can watch it all back in real time. So you see how now that this is just the BK2 file, it's a constant 60 FPS because it doesn't have the lag of all the inputs and everything like that. And this will allow you to up, uh, you can upload this to YouTube, convert it to an MP4, send it to someone and all the great things like that. So this is a great way to create tasks, projects, and just a really fun project in general to work on in your free time if you enjoy speedruns and that sort of thing. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you so that you can also learn how to create some really neat task projects. Thanks for watching.